What's going on, everybody? It's How To Tuesday, and this one is very timely. I've been getting a lot of questions uh, on the text thread, which you could also ask a question on the text thread if you want to by texting 305-930-7346. Had to check that, make sure it was right. Yeah, 305-930-7346. That's the text thread, and that's where I get a lot of the questions that turn into a How To Tuesday or a Physical Friday podcast. Happy to do it. I love to hear from you guys. So if you have a question, that's the best place to ask. If you do not want to text for whatever reason, you could email podcast at saltwaterexperience.com. You will not get a response as fast if you do it that way, but that is also a way that you can get in touch with me. All right. So the question that I've been getting and why this is extremely um important to get this particular How-To Tuesday out as fast as possible is because the questions have been coming about the Atlantic Palolo worm hatch. Now, if you don't know what the Atlantic Palolo worm is, it is a small worm, kind of mysterious. um, And this worm, apparently, from what I have read, is actually quite a large worm that lives in the coral um, in the Florida Keys and probably many, many other places in the Atlantic Ocean. And um, at certain tide phases, certain moon phases, certain times of the year, it breaks off a small little, I don't know, three to four inch worm and these things, it's some sort of spawning behavior. The worms are all swimming around And one of the fish that really, 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 really likes to eat them is a tarpon. And so the Atlantic Palolo worm hatch happens at the time of the year when there are also uh, the most uh, volume of large tarpon in the Florida Keys of any other time of the year. The tarpon are migratory fish, as we've talked about many times before. So the migration is in full swing. It's coming through. There are more big tarpon around than any other time of the year. Then you have this magical event, uh, which is this Atlantic Palolo worm hatch that only happens at a certain time of the year, on certain tides, at certain times of the day, on a certain moon phase. And if you hit it right, it is a very, very cool um, experience. Whether you catch fish or you don't catch fish, merely, purely from a scientific perspective, aspect, from a visual aspect, from just a a lifetime experience, it's something that you should see, right? Sometimes you can jump a lot of fish. Other times there seem to be more worms in the water and than, than you want. And you don't jump a lot of fish or get any bites because even though the tarpon are obviously eating things all around you, they're not eating your fly. And in my opinion is, is that there's some times where it's very much like a trout fishing situation where you have a blanketing PMD hatch or whatever. There are literally a million real bugs on the water. Why are they going to eat the one that you're throwing, right? You, you might get one, but chances are they have millions of other things to eat that are real and look perfect to them. Why are they going to eat the one that doesn't? So I think that that's the situation. If you can find the Palolo worm hatch where they're not it's not a heavy hatch where there are just, you know, some worms available and they are eating them. Then when you throw in front of these fish, they eat yours. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Some days we've jumped, you know, 30 fish. Other days you don't get a single bite. So that's not the question. The question is how do you predict the Atlantic Palolo worm hatch? When is it? You know, and how do you how do you know? Okay, so my experience or what we're going to talk about here is based upon my experience, my experience alone. And some people may disagree with it or find it it, it that they have a different experience. But in my experience, going back to here's a tide book from 1999, going back through all the tide books. In preparation for this podcast, I started looking and I would jot all kinds of notes down in these things. And and uh, it was consistent year over year over year over year. There were certain tide phase, certain tides that were warm tides. 
Now, it's important to know the worm tides, and some people may be looking for the worm tides because they want to try to hit the palola worm hatch and maybe catch some fish during the palola worm hatch. Other experienced fly fishermen for tarpon like to avoid these tides because the fish can act kind of weird during the day. You don't find as many. They're not biting as well. Um, and, and people blame it on the worm tides. Other people think the worm tides are the best. So whether you're trying to avoid the worm tides or you're trying to hit the worm tides, we'll, we'll talk about what, what my experience has been. So my experience is that in the months of May and June, the worms can hatch around the new moon, the last new moon in May, and the first uh, full, the first moon, the first new moon in June. Okay. Now it could happen other times probably, but the magic formula is a tide, a low tide of negative 0.3 or lower late in the afternoon. Okay. So when I'm looking back here, the first time I have, uh, you know, the worms could hatch as early as when you have a negative 0.3 or lower. And the sunset is going to be around 756 this time of the year. So you want that low tide to be somewhat close to the, uh, the, the somewhat close to the time uh, of sunset. And I, I made a mistake when I was talking before. I said the last new moon of May and the first new moon of June. It, I was actually mistaken. It's the last full moon in May and the first new moon in June. So those are the biggest tide fluctuations. Those are where you're going to be see the biggest tides is on that new moon and the full moon. And you want that tide close to sunset to have your best chance at seeing worms. Now, I will say that I've seen worm hatches that do not correlate with these tides. So this is by no means written in stone. But if I were to try to forecast it and try to be out there when it was happening, I would be out there when the tide is going to be you know, at 4.30, 5, 6 o'clock low tide, when the tide is going to be a negative point three. And, you know, I've seen them when it's a negative point one or, or something, but it's going to be a negative tide usually. And it's going to be, uh, around sunset. Now, as you get over to the new moon in June, this is where the tide is really, really low and, uh, a negative point six or lower. And so you have that around 4.30, I've seen them then, have that around 5.30, seen them then, 6.15, seen them then, that 7 o'clock low tide, uh, I'm looking in my, in my book about when I, when I have seen them, and at that point, it, I didn't see them that night. So by no means is this written in stone. Now, the other thing that you can, you can uh, um, expect is that it is also not necessarily condition dependent. There are a lot of tarpon fishing situations that are very condition dependent. It needs to be flat calm or, uh, you know, blowing is a little bit better. Okay. I've seen the worms uh, when it's blowing 25 and I've seen them when it is absolutely slick calm and it does not seem to make a difference. Um, but I've also been out there under perfect what what seemingly were perfect conditions based upon my experience, based upon the notes that I had, and no worms. So I don't know. You got to go out there and and check it out. But that is the recipe: a negative point three or lower tide with that new moon or full moon around this time of the year. Now, why this is so timely is because the um, the full moon. Let's see. I think it is uh, in two days, uh, Saturday the thirtieth. Okay, so I'm I'm recording this uh, right now on Thursday, and on Saturday, April thirtieth, 
you got a full moon and you have a low tide at 4.40 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon. So that's a little early, but it's certainly worth a look. I've seen the worms went as early as uh, as two when that low tide is at a 2.50 in the afternoon. Um, and it was later in the afternoon, so it was actually on the incoming tide. But it seems to do better on the outgoing tide uh, on that magic moon phase when the when you're getting close to sunset and you got a tr- tremendous amount of tide flow and a really really low tide um the places that um the worms are are are, are hatching often and regularly are very well known uh, uh it's very easy to google them uh Bahia Honda bridge has a tremendous worm hatch all off the off the front of Key West has a tremendous worm hatch and and lots and lots of places have have them. So you're looking for that hard white bottom, and uh, and and a place where there can be a lot of tarpon. And if you find it, you may get into them. If you do not catch them, it's still really really cool to get out there. Uh, if you have some ideas about the worm hatch, love to hear them. I think it's just a really cool phenomenon that happens in the Florida Keys, the Atlantic Palolo worm. So I'm going to get this podcast out as quickly as possible, uh, hopefully on Tuesday, which is going to miss this first uh, this first worm hatch, but maybe maybe you can use this, this knowledge or this uh, information to uh, hit the next one. Uh, so if you do hit it, I'd love to see a picture. Shoot me a picture at the, uh, at the text. Picture of the worms, picture of you catching a fish. I don't care, whatever, whatever it is. I just think it would be really cool if you, if you hit it. Um, whether you already knew this information or or this information is new, it's uh, it's a really cool deal. Okay, that is how to Tuesday for this week. How to predict the Atlantic Palolo worm hatch? I hope you get out there and experience it for yourself, or I hope you can avoid these tides and then go out there and crush them the next week. Uh, after they quit acting weird uh, as they tend to do on the Palolo worm hatch tides in the daytime. All right, that's it for this week. We will see you next week for another How-To Tuesday. See ya.